Hi, Yarnabees. Hi, Yarnabees. So, uh, my guest co-host, Crochet Yes, um, for all the new subscribers, and we have had a flood of new subscribers in this last little while. Thank you very yeah. much. Um, I am Sandy's other half. I wouldn't say better half. It's a matter of opinion. But um, cro they call me Crochet B on the channel. Hopefully, if you're new, you've been going back in time and watching all <clears throat> one million of our videos. And you would see on the very first one that I was on, where Sandy was introducing herself as, Hi, I'm Sandy from Crochet A. And she said, and this is my husband, George. And I said, Crochet B, because it just as a joke, well, that is stuck. So officially on this channel, I am known as Crochet B. Somebody actually coined that phrase for you. Well, no, I, I said Crochet B, and then everybody was commenting, We love you, B. And anyway, I've, I've turned into Crochet B. So that's. <laughs> okay. So the reason why we're here today is because we got tagged. Well, I got tagged, but I wanted to enjoy. <laughs> I wanted to involve George in this because he's like so smart and witty that I'm not. Um, but we got tagged from, I believe it was Samantha from Amethyst Crafts. I think. It was a little while ago, so and a lot's happened since then. So forgive me if I'm wrong, but it was either Heather the Crochet Witch or Samantha, but I'm pretty sure it was Samantha. If you don't know who Samantha is, I'll leave her link down below. Go check her out. She's adorable. I love her to bits. So this is the Halloween spooky tag. I think that's what it's called. I'll, I'll put it here if that's not what it is. And it's, I think it's 31 questions. 31? Holy crap. Because wow. um, it, I think there was like a couple that there wasn't... Heather the Crochet Witch and ended up adding a couple because, you know, 31 days of Halloween, whatever. So, so yeah, we got, I got a little ways to go. <laughs> okay, so. So these are all basically Halloween themed questions. Yes. Okay, so question number one. Uh, what is your favorite horror or Halloween themed song? I'm going to say Oinko Boingo's Dead Man's Party. I can't believe she actually had an Oingo. <laughs> the only Halloween theme song that I can even think of is uh, Monster Mash. Oh, that's They boring. did the mash, they did the Monster Mash. I hate it, but that's boring. it's the only Halloween theme song that I can... What about Thriller? ...that I can think of. Well, I guess you have all Thriller, I guess. Um... You know, um, nope. I'd have to okay. really think about it. I mean, there's obviously, as a as a Black Sabbath fan, I'm sure there's some Halloween theme <laughs> stuff in there, or some of my my other metal ones. But whenever I think of like a what's a Halloween song, you always think of Monster Mash. But as far as uh, music related to that, well, any Alice um, Cooper song, <laughs> I think I think my favorite kind of. Um, horror movie kind of spooky movie kind of music has got to be the music from the Halloween movies. Well, when they do that, that piano. Have I just saw something on um, YouTube about that. It was actually, uh, it was hilarious. They were showing Michael Myers and how he composed the song for the Halloween movie. If I can find it, I will link it down below. It was hilarious. So, anyway. Okay, moving on. Number Question two. number two. Name something you wouldn't want to run into in a dark forest or in an abandoned building. Well, Michael Myers. Oh, hello. Um... I would have to say an apparition, like a real apparition. Um, I can sense spirits, but I can't see them. So but she for talks me to, to them. yeah, for me to actually see them, I think I'd probably lose my mind. You know. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, 
obviously zombies or something like that if if oh, they yeah. were if they were real but um or my ex-husband but uh, well yeah the ex-wife yeah. is pretty much a scary <laughs> oh my god she's so scary even michael myers would go running in the other direction um, uh, okay, moving but on. I mean, if, if you're talking about something real life, I mean, in a dark forest, I mean, you know, a uh, grizzly bear or a bear or a, a, a killer. wolf or a savage dog or something like that, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Abandoned building. Well, <laughs> we actually have real life zombies here in Nanaimo. Stop. Um, stop. Uh, we have a homeless population that walks around all horribly tweaking out and drug addicted. And they're stop like... It. So we call them zombies because that's exactly what they look and, and act like. And they probably would be in an abandoned building. Although, I'm not really afraid of them. I don't find them all that, that threatening. But they're kind of everywhere here. I may have to edit this out. Well, there you go. Number three is a, anyway, is a number three. loaded question. Have you ever played with a Ouija board? Never. Um, Never. I have. I have. I think... What, when you're kids and stuff, a lot of times you do do that. Um, but um, I will say I don't recommend it. Um, mm -mm. I'm not as spiritually in tune with uh, the supernatural and the other side as Sandy. Sandy is very much in tune with that. Um, for those of you that don't know, Sandy, Sandy is Wiccan and she's very spiritual and she's really connected with that side i've always been fascinated but i seem to have no cable when it comes to to that sort of stuff but um i am of the opinion that if you are messing with the ouija board you are playing with fire and you are you are probably <clears throat> opening a door and you're letting something through that you probably don't want to have happen there's been too many uh famous cases in the past where it started with people messing around with ouija boards and I just don't think it's a good idea. FYI. What? I'm pagan, not Wiccan. Pagan, Wiccan. <laughs> Are the pagans the one that keep their clothes on when they dance around the fire? No, that's... <laughs> oh, okay. Good. Well, good. Then let's all be pagan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. This Again, this next one is... Uh, there are so many. Favorite horror monster or villain? Um, hmm. for me, it, it's easy. Um, oh my gosh. If I was going with horror, I think it would have to be, well, Michael Myers scares the living crap out of me. Um, like that for sure. Uh, but if it's a villain, well, he's kind of a villain. He's killing people there. The well, I'm movie. I'm talking about like, you know, like um, what do you call it? Like Superman kind of stuff. No, no, no. It's not like that. It's horror. Yeah, but if it's a villain, you could like, say Dracula, Frankenstein. Yeah, they well, they would all qualify. Yeah, I think it would probably be Michael Myers. I think for me, I, um, I would run like hell. <laughs> Like, no, like, uh -oh. <laughs> um, for me, I think it would be Freddy Krueger. Um, oh. I like, um, yeah, I like horror movies, not quite as much as Sandy. Uh, <laughs> but one of the problems when you watch them is there's nothing really original. It's all the same old, yeah. same old. But when the original Nightmare from Elm Street came out, that one was really good because it was a whole oh. different um, variation on... Um, on mm -hmm. horror villains, because this was yeah. somebody that could go into your dreams and mess with you, yeah. and if you died in your sleep, and that that's the kind of thing that really kept me, gave me the eebie-jeebies just thinking about that one. And then if I think yeah. of another one, if I think of the perfect, um, the perfect horror film um, that I think that, that, that I thought was the smartest, cleverest, most original one ever made. It's the very first Saw movie. Oh. I thought that was so oh, well man. done. Um, just the whole idea of the fact that the killer was lying there the oh. whole time and they had no idea that the guy they thought was dead was really that guy and yeah. that um, he had lured them all there because they had wronged him in different ways while he was having cancer and all of that. Oh. That's another one that really... 
Um, I, I tend to like the, mouth, yeah, man, I just... like the psychological ones. I'm not really big on the yeah. the blood and guts and let's just kill like 6 billion people like the Friday yeah. the 13th ones and stuff like that. But ones like that that are smart. Yeah, and, like Split. Um, yeah, split, split is another people. one. Um, I don't know if I would really call it a horror it's not movie. It's horror, but it's a psychological thriller. But it was just so, thriller, so well done and amazingly acted. Like, I cannot believe that that guy Aww. was not nominated for some kind of an Academy Award because he basically plays like nine different characters. Yeah, that's insane. Um, and, and, and really, really well done. Not so much in the sequel. Yeah. In the sequel, they kind of went almost kind of cartoonish a bit with him. But in the yeah. original one... Uh, he was absolutely brilliant. So, yeah. Yep. So, there, I guess we just gave him a whole bunch. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, the original Nightmare on Elm Street, I thought, was almost the perfect horror film. Yeah. And the original Saw, I also thought, was just like mind blowingly good. I thought it was so yeah. well done. And that's a movie that was basically <laughs> shot all in one room. Yeah. If you think about it, it was pretty low budget. The only other stuff was when they did all the flashback. Scenes that kind of led up to them all being in that one place. But that's, yeah. I've often thought that would be actually a really good stage play. You could actually do it as a stage play and it could be really well done. Not to mention all the Japanese horrors. Like that's on a totally well, different... Well, the ring and all of those. Oh, that's like... Those are totally all creepy different. just because the the girl like walking upside oh. down and going... Uh, uh, the the noises like, that she makes and... That's a totally different level of creep. That's like And that's... the other thing is when we were watching it... We actually had the phone go off when we were watching it, which scared the, the crap out of us at the time. So yeah. there's that. So oh, Bailey's all going crazy. Bailey's now. apparently scared of something. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Next. Was, is what was the creepiest thing that's ever happened while you were alone? Oh, jeez. I think it would have to be. Oh God, I don't even know what. What Bailey? I don't know what she's on about. Um, I think it would have to be when I was in grade five. How old would I be then? Eight, seven? Grade five, you'd be ten because you're ten. five years old when you start kindergarten or grade one. Oh, that's true. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it was before that, so maybe I was around eight. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know why, but my mom decided in her infinite wisdom to watch a horror movie after I went to bed. And I came out, I had to go to the bathroom and it was one of those, da, 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 you know, stop and look and go. Oh! My mom stopped the, the TV right, right away. And I was like, I want to watch that, you know, typical kid. And mom's like, no way in hell am I going to let you watch this. And I was like, but I want to see, I want to see. And she thought it was a good idea to scare the crap out of me and let me watch about five minutes of it. And that movie was The Exorcist. <laughs> That five-minute clip that she let me watch was when Linda Blair's head was spinning around. And I'll tell you, I, I nearly peed my pants. I was so scared. And from, this, from that point on, I've never been able to watch The Exorcist. Um, it, it, it just brings up some bad stuff for me. So right after that... <laughs> I was laying in bed and I literally felt an arm come up the side of my bed. It bumped my bed and it, a hand was on me and I screamed so loud and my mom came running in going, what is wrong? And I'm like, there's something under my bed. <laughs> It's like, and the, of course there was nothing there, but I, I truly believe that <clears throat> a spirit of some sort, a negative spirit saw my reaction to that and came at me. That's what I think. But it scared the crap out of me. Yeah. That's a movie that really messed a lot of people up. Um, 
A lot of Can people you imagine don't, being eight years old watching that? What a lot oh of people God. don't know when they've heard about um, people like freaking out in the theater when it was being shown and all of that when it first came out is they actually had uh, subliminal frames in the original theatrical release where uh, what that is is when you're watching a movie it's several frames per second and you uh, but uh, they would put a frame with something scary in it in amongst a whole lot of other stuff and you wouldn't see it see it but your subconscious would see it and it contributed to everybody getting this the anxiety and the nervousness so that they had this crazy reaction that is now illegal because of what happened during people were almost committing suicide so it's right up there with the original war of the worlds on the radio where it really wow. badly affected people so it's now uh, no longer legal to do that in film anymore but i remember what? at the time how that, sick do you have to be that, to do uh, something like that? well they were trying to get like, people to be scared and well, um, like the movie wasn't scary yeah, enough well like hello but anyway. oh my god okay. so for me um i don't remember anything really creepy about when i was alone but something a little creepy happened with when San sandy and i were in bed together <laughs> um and that's that um our little dog odie had had passed away so if again mm -hmm. For all you new people, if you go back in the archives, yeah. you will see our our farewell video um, to our little dog, Odie, which everybody yeah. balls her eyeballs out. It's pretty sad. Sandy's really good at pulling the heartstrings and <laughs> make it. Anyway, um, but um, ever since Odie's passed away, Sandy insists on having Bailey in bed with us, which I yeah. really don't like. But um, Bailey's in bed with us. Well, one night um, we were in bed and I heard the dog jump off the bed and walk down the hallway and I said to um to Sandy um um where is Bailey going and Sandy said Bailey is right here and I felt over and the dog was actually right and the cat was in between right us. beside me so something jumped off our bed and, and you could hear walk down the thud and the you could hear the nails yeah. on the floor I am um, you could hear the tinkling of the I am yeah, not the sort of person that normally sees ghosts. Like I've yeah. always been fascinated by all this kind of stuff, but I just, I don't seem to have that sensitivity to be able to see this sort Apparently of stuff. You do. <laughs> but that night I definitely heard it and she heard it too. I laughed because and, I um, said to him, I says, Oh, you heard that. Did you? Yeah, <laughs> it was. Uh, so that was a little freaky, even though it was our <laughs> beloved dog that I'm sure wouldn't do anything. Uh, I swear to you, I heard that as plain as day. So <laughs> I, I guess that was a afterwards. I laughed because I thought, "Ha ha, you're aware." Yeah. Sandy picks up on a lot of things, and I don't see anything. There could be ghosts too. I'm going right in front of my face, going. Nuh, 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 and I, <laughs> I, I would have no idea. But anyway, <laughs> oh, it's funny. Okay. Number six: If you were, we're dared never get through this. <laughs> to spend the night in a haunted house, would you do it? No, not a chance. There that. would have to be some significant money. Um, <laughs> on the line yeah. but again for me because i tend to i don't i'm not in tune with it i don't hear it but a lot of times <laughs> you freak yourself out even before you go there yeah. because people <laughs> tell you the stories and yeah. you remember when we we were all younger and they would tell you this house is haunted and you'd hear anything you'd run out screaming and there was really nothing there so yeah but uh, yeah it would have to be one of those a thousand dollars to spend the night in this house kind of thing not so, happening uh, are you superstitious or <laughs> oh no that's see... a different one. Oh. are you superstitious sandy <laughs> absolutely oh you bet sandy's so bad that if we if we have somewhere really important to go and there is a crow outside sitting on the telephone wire in front of our house we can't go <laughs> we gotta turn around and go back that's that's crow there can't go it's only if the crow is calling or calling or whatever yeah so yeah, she is a hundred percent that way. <laughs> I'm. There's certain things like if you step on a crack, you break your mother's back, blah blah. That stuff, it's like yeah, whatever. Yeah. You know, but <clears throat> when but it she comes believes to, in omens, she oh, believes yeah. in signs. Yeah. She believes that everything is a sign or reminds her of something that happened in the past. Sandy's never in the present. She's always in the past about whatever. So, yeah, 100% she's that way. For me, in the traditional sense, I would say no. Like, I'm not afraid of the number 13. Or I don't allow anything to stop me from going through life in a certain world. 
but I do say things like, um, uh, um, I believe in the football gods when I'm watching <laughs> football. Yeah. And when bad things happen, I blame the football gods or the rugby gods back when I was mm -hmm. playing rugby. And now it's yeah. the paddle gods for yeah. for dragon boating. So um, I do believe that um, um, I, I tend to believe that you make your own destiny and you make your way through the world. But sometimes there are things that definitely happen that uh, that defy explanation. So that sometimes there's a bit of something in hand for sure. Yeah. But I don't allow it to scare me uh, from doing what I want to do or anything like that. Like some people are that are superstitious. So, <laughs> so here's a good one. Do you ever see figures in your peripheral vision? Sandy does, and they're all Freddy Krueger. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I've got really good peripheral vision. Um, so when I'm doing stuff, I'll see something. And I'll just be like, okay, who's here? Right? So I, if I'm looking forward, I don't actually see a spirit or anything like that. But, <clears throat> excuse me, if it's in our peripheral and I happen to see something, um, especially if just before that I've gotten a chill or um, I can, it's my spidey senses come up, you know, and then I see something, you know, then, yeah. Um, not in my peripheral business, but sometimes I see something out of the side of my eye. Oh, that's the same thing. Never mind. Um, <laughs> I would say no. The only time that ever happened was many years ago when I lived in Toronto. And um, we were convinced that we had rodents. And I, we were telling our landlord that we... And so you sort of see something and you'd look and it was gone. And it was always every night around 9 o'clock. It was like they were coming home from work and they'd kind of slip by you. And you'd look really quickly and they're gone. So you weren't quite sure whether you saw them or not. But we eventually... I uh, did lay out some sticky traps and we actually caught 18 rodents in four days with our, when our landlord swore up and down, there were no rodents in the house. But as far as um, a lot of people claim they see shadow people out of the corner of their eyes or, or, or ghosts or things like that. And they're not sure. I can honestly say that I don't see any of that stuff. He's not open. I and, just, and I it's am probably a good thing, but. I am very grounded in the physical world. I'm a very physical person. So, um, yeah, I'm not up, up here in the nether nether or down there. Well, I'll end up down there eventually. But um, <laughs> anyway, that's another story for another day. So. <laughs> okay. Number nine. We're never going to get through this. Look. What is your favorite Halloween candy? Oh, hands down. It's the molasses candies in the little orange and, and in black. In the Halloween wrap. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. God, now that I, now I miss them. Yeah. Oh. We're going to end up, we are, by the way, Sandy has decided that we're not going to get any, anything to give out uh, for trick or treating because we're trying to stay on our carnivore diet and she's afraid she's going to eat all the chocolate oh, bars. Oh, I know. I but know. I still think we should get something. No. So I'm I'll gonna, just make sure I will, and... I'm just going to make sure that I give everything out. Uh -huh. So whoever the last kid is that comes trick or treating to our house. <laughs> You're going to get a bonanza. Um, oh. Halloween candy. Well, when I was a kid, you always wanted to go to the houses that gave you the the chocolate bars. And especially the full-size chocolate bar. And my favorite chocolate bar of all time is Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. So, the Reese's yeah. Peanut Butter Cups. And people don't know this, but Reese's Peanut Butter Cups actually contain the four essential food groups. Oh, okay, which go. is sugar, salt, starch, and fat. Um, so you could probably live strictly on water and Reese's peanut butter cups on a desert island and you'd be okay. Oh my God. That's... Okay. So there you go. Moving well, we on. sort of already kind of answered this one. It says, do you prefer gore or thrillers? I'm half and half. Honestly. I like them both. Um, I'm not a huge fan of, of the slasher films. Um, I must be sick in the head. But the oh, um, no. <laughs> there are exceptions. Like, I enjoy the Saw movies just because of the really creative little traps and gadgets that he comes up that, that kills all the people. So I find that interesting. Um, 
But the ones that really bother me the most and really affect me are, are kind of the psychological thriller types. And it's usually, especially if the, uh, the if the acting is really, really well done and it's convincing. It's one those, of those what if. Those are the ones that tend to bother me the most. The ones where they're just killing like every teenager in the world. You know, mm -hmm. the black guy goes first and then it's the couple having sex or whatever. Yeah. It's all, we've all seen it a million times. Like how many times can you watch Friday the uh, sequels of Friday the Thirteenth? It's always oh, yeah. uh, the same old stuff. So yeah, the, it's the psychological ones that tend to to mess me up. And one, if you ever want to see a really good psychological thriller that a lot of people have never heard of, uh, look for a movie called The Medusa Touch that Richard okay. Bur Richard Burton is in it, and it's really really a good one. And um, anyway. Look it up and watch it. I think you'll like it. Richard Burton, of course, is a phenomenal actor, one of the greatest ever. And uh, again, really well written, really well acted, a very interesting uh, premise. So, yeah, for sure. Okay, number 11. Do you believe in multiple dimensions or worlds? Well, Sandy's in all of them, so of okay. course she does. <laughs> Actually, um, I don't... Mm, I believe that we're very naive if we think that we're the only ones in the universe. So I believe that there uh, on other planets, there has to be other people. Or but, life of some kind. Yeah. Um, other dimensions, like if it's like I'm, I'm, I believe that I'm someone in a different dimension. No. Like, like the Avengers multiverse? Yeah, no, I, I. I honestly don't believe in that. Um, but I do believe in spiritual. Oh, how do I explain this? Well, that would be a multi dimension. I, I guess in a if sense. If you're saying you've gone to the other side, that's obviously another dimension. It's not yeah, in this reality. But I'm talking about like if, if you have your, your self in a different dimension, having another life, right? Like a physical person. Then I don't believe in that, but spiritually, I believe that there is a different. Uh, I I believe that we go to a different dimension. Okay, I guess. well for me, uh, it's a no brainer. Of course, I believe in in multiple worlds. I've had um, more than one UFO encounter. Uh, I may not be uh, be big on the ghosties and the spiritual stuff, but I have I have had. Um, I, I have seen things and I also have a um, what they call a missing time incident where myself and two of my friends have six hours that disappeared that we can't account for. When we were 12 or 13 years old, we were out and we saw a light and the next thing we knew, we woke up and it was dark and we found that we'd been gone for eight hours and our parents were freaking out and we could not um, tell them uh, where we went or anything that happened. Um, I've never had the regressive hypnosis thing because I don't think, honestly, I really want to know. But it's your classic uh, UFO missing time incident. We've definitely, that's definitely happened to me. And I believe I've, it might have happened even more than once. But I definitely remember um, a time, myself, my best friend and another guy who we probably wouldn't even admit we even know today at the time that's <laughs> happened to me. So for sure, I believe in that. And multi-dimensions, I think so too, because a lot of people feel that the UFOs are not, maybe not always extraterrestrial, but they could be interdimensional as well. So uh, things that we don't know, we're, we're still learning about black holes and all kinds of things that, and everything. So, but yeah, I don't think that Dr. Strange is in like <laughs> 15 different places and stuff or, yeah. or whatever, but these are things that we're not going to ever know in our lifetime. So yeah. Number twelve. We're really taking a long time to yes, do this, and the, patri you won't stop talking. the patriots are kicking off as we yeah. speak. <laughs> um, luckily, I can rewind. Um, <laughs> okay, this one for Sandy, I know for sure is yes. It says, "Have you ever made a potion of any sort? How do you think she got me in the first place?" <laughs> I went in to clean her carpets, and she said, "Here, drink this." The next thing I knew. <laughs> I was married. I don't even know what the hell happened. But no, 
I've never made potions, but George has. Every time he makes a whiskey, <laughs> that's, that's a potion. Yeah, I don't have any potion here tonight, so if anybody's <laughs> feeling sorry for me, please send whiskey. To, yeah. um, well, in a way, I, not like in the, the magical sense, but I am a carpet cleaner by trade. I do make some of my own spot removers and some of my own chemicals that I do mix together. That's being a mixologist. So, <laughs> so I guess it's kind of a cleaning potion, and I cannot reveal the contents of my secret spot remover, but it uh, it works very well. That's all yes, I'll say. I'm not Wiccan or anything, so I don't do potions and spells and stuff like that. So, so the so the next question is: Do you get scared easily? Hell ah! yeah. <laughs> Apparently, yes. <laughs> You're an asshole! So, uh, that's a big yes for Sandy. It's a big yes for Sandy. Um, for me... Oh, my God! Um, for me, I, I would say no, generally. I mean, anybody can be startled, like I just startled her. Um, and And... Sandy gets scared of like the smallest spider will send her <laughs> jumping like twelve feet in the air oh, and things God. like that. Uh, but for me, I would say oh. generally not. When um, <laughs> when the shit hits the fan and a lot of people would be freaking oh. out, I generally have a really a pretty cool head. Um, if you saw my wonderful video a month back called "Tales from the Carpet Trail," the three most disgusting jobs I've ever done carpet cleaning you would know that I don't scare easily because all three of those jobs would be enough to <laughs> scare um, almost anybody. So for the most part, I think I do have a pretty cool head. But I did get him a couple of times. Like, <laughs> Well, she I, told me she was pregnant. That scared the crap out of me. <laughs> but there was that. I, I, he went up, got up to the bathroom and we don't normally have the lights on. And I came down the hall and came around the corner and I went to go to the bathroom too. And he didn't realize I was standing behind him. And he turned around and I thought he was going to pee on the floor. Yeah, you can <laughs> startle somebody maybe is one thing, but actually scared. Yeah, yeah like, I don't know. I, I am totally a scary cat. Oh my God, she's the worst. I, I'm, I'm really bad. Like I'm a very nervous person to begin with. Um, I have anxiety really bad. And so, yeah, a lot of things like we can be driving in the car and because I've had a few accidents and I went into a, um, an intersection and a lady came and smooshed my car and it was a pretty bad accident. Ever since then, I can't go through an intersection, especially if someone else is driving uh, without freaking out. Worst backseat driver in the world. Yeah. So. Um, and she likes to make that. <gasps> yeah. Noise when we're we're hundred yards yeah. away from the car in front of us, but she's still. Yeah. Like, yeah. So. And she's like, yeah. watch out, watch out. She's one of those, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. And if yeah. she sees a spider, like forget oh, it. Yeah. Kill it, kill it, kill it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll, I'll just move out of the house. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have you ever played Bloody Mary? No. no. Nope. Again, I haven't. Or not Candyman or yeah. anything. No. Mm -mm. That's right up the no. whole Ouija board thing. Yeah, no. Um, you know, like I say, I may not be in tune with yeah. with all of that, but I think it's really stupid to be opening the door uh, and inviting yeah. things to come through there. You never know what could come through. Sometimes that, it's and the that's ex-wife. Exact... And it's <laughs> that's really like, scary. That's the thing, is that even though Candyman and Bloody Mary are probably made up things the spirit world probably doesn't even know that and is going hey here's a door yeah you know so yeah, yeah no. if you believe that they're out there and <laughs> that the, you know there are some that are not very nice and i think that that i believe in that for sure yeah um it's not a good idea to uh don't well mess, <laughs> don't mess with it. coming into the next question it says do you believe in demons or the devil um Again, there's an ex-wife that I have. Um, <laughs> I I actually don't believe in the devil. Um, I don't necessarily believe in what's typically called a demon. Um, but I do believe in negative spirits and... What's the word? Malevolent? Malevolent. Male 
I was going to say Maleficent. Or whatever. No, Maleficent is the witch that, that Angelina Jolie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that. I'm not scared of her at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do believe in that, you know, because if a serial killer or a murderer, like a horrible murderer, um, dies in the after, and then he's in the afterlife and gone to God knows where. Well, there. Um, I truly believe that they are laying in wait uh, for an opportunity to come back in some form. And the reason I know that is because I used to write poetry. And I ended up writing a poem. I, I, I don't know where it came from. I don't know. I don't know how it happened. It was like I zoned out. And the next thing I looked down and I had a poem and it was all about um, a murderer and how a murderer feels. And I was just stunned. And I thought, <laughs> and I thought, oh, okay. So obviously I was amused for something there. So yeah, I, I just, I just believe in a na negative, nasty spirit. So I don't believe in. Yeah, I'm. I'm not a um, a believer, a, like a traditional religious uh, believer in in God and the devil and all of that. But I do believe there is good and evil, um, and I believe there's good and evil in all of us. I think we all yeah. have the cap capability of being good or evil, uh, given the motivation. Um, For that time of the month. But you know. Well. <laughs> Clearly, they go. You know, menopause is a demon for sure. It's, it's destroyed many people. Yeah. Um, but um, but I do believe. Yeah, there are. I believe there are things that influence. I mean, I do believe yeah. there are things that influence people, push them a certain way. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, if you start taking bad drugs, if you kind of open yourself up, your psychosis to invite yeah. something like that in. If it's drug induced, or it actually is a spirit, but obviously. Yeah. Uh, we've all seen cases where, well, we just had a case um, here where we've had somebody uh, murder um, an RCMP officer. Oh, and yeah. the story was that he was a successful actor, filmmaker, very <laughs> successful. Oh, and then really? he was, uh, yeah, he's an Emmy Award winning um, film producer. I didn't know that. And then he was falsely accused of, of, um, of a, of a uh, sexual assault. And put through the whole ringer of you're guilty, 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 and it really messed him up, and it turned him to drugs and turned him, and it's basically turned him into a completely different person, and now he's killed an RCMP officer. Oh, so it's quite the story. That. So I'm not always sure what pushes people one way or the other, um, whether it's okay. external <laughs> outside forces or it's something within us. But there's <clears throat> there's more to the world than just what we see in the. Yeah. And what's around us, for sure. Oop. Number 16. This one's easy for Sandy. You're home alone, but you hear footsteps in your house. What do you do? She calls me. Every time. She'll call me. There's people in the house. Covers over the head. Like, I... First, I mean, if I hear that kind of... I, and I hear it in this house all the time. That is why I do not go down in the basement. Um, when he's in bed, I hear a lot of stuff. And it freaks me out. <clears throat> so it's usually just me scratching at the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the first thing I do is protect myself. Protect myself, protect him, protect if my dog. If you pull blankets over your head, nothing can get you. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so, I would definitely get up to see what's going on if I heard what I thought was somebody in the house. And I would... Uh, uh, mm. He sleeps through everything. We have a number of uh, of weapons conveniently located very close to uh, where we sleep. Yeah. So <laughs> they're swords. Uh, we have swords and medieval weapons and really <laughs> nasty little things that can do yeah. horrible damage. So yeah, but, I'm very much a protector. Sandy, if he's awake. If I'm awake, <laughs> Sandy's very much a hide under the blankets. They're coming to get oh, us yeah. kind of person. So. Yeah. No, I. Mm -mm. No, I freak. Okay. I get, so. Yeah. I'll get it. You and your big fingers. All right, I'm sure the Patriots are winning by 14 points by now. <laughs> if I got trapped in one scary movie, which one would you choose? Oh, my God. With my luck, it would probably be arachnophobia. 
Is Sandy scared of spiders? Oh, man. <laughs> um, I don't on. know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, good question. Yeah. I don't know. I'd have to say um, one of the Friday the 13th movies, because there's always really hot girls in there. And then, then the other thing is, is Jason only ever walks. He never, ever runs after anybody. So I'm pretty sure I could outrun him. Because everybody's running and all he seems going. <laughs> and somehow he always seems to catch up to them. I don't know why. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to be in one. <laughs> if you could only wear one Halloween costume for the rest of your life, what would you be? I guess I can't say myself. <laughs> you'd you'd be a witch. I don't no, I don't think so. Um what would I be? I I don't honestly know because I don't get dressed up at Halloween. I don't I think I would probably do something fun like funny not scary just because you know like a fairy or a you know I I dress up as a zombie or the other easy one is you just be a ghost you put a sheet over your head you cut it you know <laughs> and that reminds me why do monsters not eat ghosts oh here we go because they taste like sheet <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Would you on. ever go to a graveyard at night? Never. I don't go to graveyards, period. Um, the first and only time I've gone to a graveyard is when his stepdad died. Uh, and that was recent, recently, a couple of years ago. I was protecting myself like crazy. I was just like, I, I was freaking out because I know that there are lost spirits walking around and I don't want them to attach themselves to me and bring them home. Um, so yeah, no, I don't. It's not something I would, would seek to do, but if there was a reason for me to be there, like say I was door dashing and somebody was working at the graveyard at night and mm -hmm. I had to drop off a delivery or something, then sure. But I'd be it's like, not, meet me at the gate. It's not the kind of place I would normally just hang out. So I yeah, guess no. that's where uh -uh. we're at there. No. I don't even like driving by them. And we've got like a really big one not too yeah, far not from too us. Yeah, not too far from us. In a zombie apocalypse, what is your weapon of choice? <laughs> that's easy. Oh. Yep, sword. Yeah. I, I'm a sword guy. Yeah. I've got multiple swords. Either swords or a uh, a mace with big spikes on it that I could just crush your head with, something like that. Yeah. Or yeah. even a ha like a like a big hammer like Thor's well, hammer no, that I could. Because they just... can still grab you. Like you want something long enough so that they're away from you. Well, but the problem is, is if they get inside that range, yes, you could have like a um, a lance or a pole a pole that you can get them from a distance. Yeah. But um, or maybe like um. The Viking um, uh, hatchet type axe. Actually, I also, I'll, I'm going to show you. Let me show oh, you what I would, go. what it would be. Here we go. Keep talking, Sandy. <laughs> um, well, I, yeah, uh, yeah, no. I'll just pause the video. Oh, I've got it. <laughs> it would be this. Because <laughs> this is what I have close to the bed, so I'd be able to stab him with this point with the pointy part. I could chop him with this blade, and I've also got some lovely little sharp spikies that I can just get him with over and over. So, um, yeah, actually, I've already got the perfect anti-zombie weapon, and it's sitting right close by. So uh, there we go. And everybody now is wondering why do you have all of that stuff in your bedroom. <laughs> They also want to know what why do you, of, why do you have of, a whip on the end of it? <laughs> it's like what kind of kink are they into? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, no. Again. No. <laughs> More. Okay. Okay. All right. Moving on. This is the last question. No, it's not. Oh. <laughs> Shoot. Would you rather go to a Halloween party or go trick or treating? Well, considering that I have social anxiety. 
Um, I would say trick or treating. <laughs> um, if we were taking our, our grandchild, which is Sandy is about to have a grandchild in December. Um, I then, forgot all about that. Then, I could take him trick then or treating. for sure, like we can go trick or treating. I've gone trick or treating oh, with yeah. my own grandchildren. Um, and that, and it's a lot of fun. So, yeah, but, but having said that, I'm also very much a party person. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I could definitely do the Halloween party. Yeah. Although if I did the ghost thing and put a sheet over my head, I might be able to get away with going there to a party. <laughs> okay. I thought we were done, but no, no, there's 31. Remember? Okay. Question. You're in a horror movie. Are you the final girl? The first to die? The comic relief? The skeptic, the smart one, or the killer? Oh, I... Sandy's yeah. the first to die. Yep. She's done. Yep. Yep. <laughs> She'd be wearing the red shirt in all the Star Trek oh, yeah. movies. Yep. Yep. She'd be gone. Um, I think George would be the comic. I, the comic relief, just because I have that kind of sense of humor. Um, yeah. Or, yeah, I don't know. Or the skeptic. Or the skeptic. I'd be going, this is bullshit or whatever, right? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean you're dead? Get up! You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, so, whoops. Yeah. Hang on. Uh, where is this? This is... It's right there. Oh. Yeah. Do you have to watch something happy after watching a horror movie so you can go to sleep? Yes. No, most of them don't bother me to the point that I can't go to sleep. Oh. Mm -mm. Maybe three or four in my whole lifetime ever really gave me nightmares and really bothered me. And again, those were the ones that were kind of the psychological thriller types that seem to sit in the back of my mind and get yeah. me thinking split what, was one for you yeah split yeah, was definitely split was, split was a good one that one for bothered sure. him for days yeah that one really got to, <laughs> again because the acting was so good yeah. and i don't i guess we don't want to spoil it but yeah. anyway yeah yeah it was the ending good. is a little up in the air yeah that's the other the other thing about that so yeah if you're watching one where they kill the bad guy in the end and you know he's dead then it's not too scary if they get away or, you know, he fell out the window and they're looking. Oh, there's no body there. He's gone. Unless, so like Halloween. Unless, like they never killed the guy. Yeah, they chopped off they his They chopped head his head off and he's still alive. But then, then they they changed it to it wasn't him, right? So it's like, oh, okay. Well, watching scary movies, are you the person who yells at the characters? Yes. <laughs> the person with their eyes covered the whole time or the person who falls asleep? <laughs> I'm the one that's yelling at them. Why are you going in the basement? Yeah. Don't go in the attic. I'm hiding. <laughs> yeah. I'm the one that's doing this. <laughs> I'm always the ones that, that questions all the dumb choices. Like, why would you do that? And, yeah. and whatever. <laughs> like when I watch football, why would you throw that pass? Oh, yeah. How can you not catch it? Yep. <laughs> are you the one who gets scared or, are you, or the one who does the scaring? Oh, I'm... Yeah. I like to be the, the one that does the scaring, right? Obviously. Ah! <laughs> See? <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> oh, here we go. Favorite scary book. Oh. Um, I don't read scary books. I write them, but I don't read them. Yeah. Um, I read, like, John Saul where it's a psychological thriller kind of thing um and i don't read anymore like i just don't have time but i like when when harry potter came out i read the first one got bored and watched the movies i would rather watch the movie than read the book um lifelong stephen king fan I think there was a time I could say that I've read everything he'd ever written, but I have kind of fallen off the bandwagon the last few years. But I think his book, It, is the best scary book ever. The movies were good. The movie's good. The book is also very good. It's very long, and it goes into great detail. Um, Stephen King is so good, um, not just because he has a lot of original ideas, but his characters are all come across as real people that you could actually know or identify with and he has a way of relating to you on a personal level so that you do get kind of sucked into the story so definitely um his his book it i think is the best <laughs> book he's written i really like it a lot um i like the dark, the dark tower series but that wasn't scary and i like the stand again i didn't find that particularly yeah. scary 
but I thought it was it was really well done. So next, how old were you when you saw your first horror movie? Already answered. Oh, that. super young, because I have older <laughs> brothers, and um, I um, was born in the seventies, and back at that time they used to have a thing called Nightmare Theater that was on every. Mm -hmm. Friday night and we would watch that and just love all that so as long as I can remember I've been watching scary shows now what was your first Halloween costume honestly don't remember I think mine might have been a scarecrow <laughs> my mom used to make all of our costumes and I know I've seen pictures of me and my sister dressed up and I I'd have to go back and look but I think it may have been a scarecrow. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. I remember, you know, being a ghost with the sheet on as a kid and some of the other stuff, but don't remember. If you could have a spooky Halloween pet, a black cat, owl, bat, rat, wolf, what would you pick? Well, we had a black cat. Yeah, we had a, a black cat. Um, I, an owl, mm, no, it's more Harry Potter. Bat, no. I would love to have a wolf. Yeah, me too. Because I am a wolf person. Yeah. Um, if I had it, apparently when I've done the... Uh, You're my wolf. Yes, when I've done the, uh, <laughs> the psychological stuff, uh, wolf always comes out as my yeah. spirit animal. Um, when I Even when I watched uh, stupid, um, whatchamacallit, um, what is it called? Twilight. Oh, I identified oh. more with the wolf guys than I did with the vampire guys. I wanted and I've to always, identify. <laughs> I've always felt more affinity to the werewolves than I have to the vampires. Yeah. Although I like good vampire movies when they're done yeah. really well. Um, anyway. If I had the choice between what I'd want to be, I'd want to be a vampire. Because I, I'm actually afraid of death. I'm afraid of dying. So I living forever, not a bad thing. Oh, and I have another recommendation. Oh, um, here we go. Now that we're talking about vampires, um, it was a it's actually a TV show that was on cable that we watched called The Strain. That oh. was incredibly well done. That was. Uh, you don't realize in the beginning that it's actually a vampire show because yeah. it comes across as there's there's it's like a pandemic community. You know, all these people are found dead on the airplane <laughs> and they think it's some kind of a pathogen, but it turns out. Uh, that there was a vampire aboard. Yeah. And uh, so that, again, if you're looking, I can't remember which uh, cable network it was on. but yeah, uh, It would be different. That for was else. really, really good. I highly recommend that one. And um, last but not least. What is your favorite type of paranormal supernatural creature? Vampire, werewolf, wolf. Well, I just said werewolf. Uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ghost wouldn't be it. <laughs> that's for sure um but you like the vampires too i i really do i like i like the vampire stuff um he's got to be a sexy vampire though well i like <laughs> one of the things i like about the vampire characters is there's always been that kind of sexual component to it yeah and when it's when it's done when it's done properly really well like like um bram stoker's dracula when they made yeah. that movie with gary oldman was phenomenal yeah. Again, good makeup, and Gary Oldman is just an amazing actor. If you have the right person in the role, then the vampire movies are are mm -hmm. really good. But I also, I've always liked the werewolf movies, especially the more modern ones where they can really do the transformations really well and, and have it look really good. That vampire, the one, the one vampire movie from like way back where he's climbing up the wall and it's looking down That's from Dracula. the window. That's Dracula. That's, oh my that's God. Dracula. That's him I, going out at night to, to I, do like, whatever. When you see him crawling up the wall and you're looking down, yeah, yeah. that scares the crap yeah. out of me. It's it's pretty close. I mean, I'm a wolfy kind of guy, and uh, yeah. I've liked the werewolves, but I, I I do like yeah <laughs> I do like the vampires too if they're yeah. if they're well done and you know anyway yeah and that be it that's it so it's been an hour. <laughs> What's really scary is this is a really long video and the Patriots are probably winning by four oh, touchdowns. Yeah. So well. um, I'm going to get yeah. off and rewind my yeah. um, streaming service so I can watch the game from beginning. Yep. So thank you for joining us. I know this was a long one, but it was a lot of fun. <clears throat> Those of you that want to see more of me, um, 
which is every time I'm on here, they all say, oh, why isn't he on here more? Because I work six jobs so Sandy can have yarn <laughs> and, uh, and, and have a crochet channel. So, so that's not true. That's why. So. <laughs> So anyways, thank you so much. Um, I have some upcoming videos. Uh, so stay tuned because there's some good stuff coming. Okay, we love you. Bye, guys. Bye.